All right, so I think we can uh, go ahead and get started here. And you guys will notice there's a little change on the titling here. Um, so I will be speaking to you guys about um, the invisible infiltration of AI supply chain, um, as well as kind of the protective measures from adversarial actors through the lens of some work um, that we're doing at Control Plane and as well in the open source committee uh, or the open source um, community with FinOS and the AI Readiness Working Group. Um, so we have been working on a simple AI governance framework, um, which uh, is, is being primarily framed through the lens of a threat model of a reference architecture that we've been working with. Um, so a little about myself before I get into this. Um, my name is Torn Vanderbilt. Um, I am a cloud native security engineer at Control Plane. Um, I am an OS threat modeler, so I worked on the Argo CD threat model and the Envoy Gateway threat model. Um, so really excited to now be applying some of our um, OS findings as well to AI security. Um, and I've also had uh, <clears throat> the experience of, of doing some red teaming uh, for AI. Um, and I will uh, give bonus points to anyone who actually knows what this terminal is from or what game this is from. Uh, but we can talk about that after the presentation. Um, so a little bit about uh, Control Plane. Um, so we are a cloud native security consultancy that was established in 2017. Uh, we have just over 50 people that operate um, in the United Kingdom, Europe, Asia Pacific, as well as in North America. Um, we are security specialists in cloud, Kubernetes, and containers. Um, and our clients are primarily uh, governments, uh, as well as in highly regulated industries and financial services, um, which kind of plays into some of our involvements uh, in FinOS um, and, and why we have been so dedicated in helping out in that community. Um, so some of the open source contributions and community that we have been a part of. Um, so our illustrious tech evangelist, Andrew, Mar or Andrew Martin, for any who have had the pleasure of meeting him, um, has served as the co-chair on the Linux Foundation's TAG security. Um, and we have also worked on the, and are continuing to work on the Kubeflow security assessment, um, which continues on today. Um, we have uh, helped and uh, wrote the Kubernetes threat model in the CNCF for the financial services user group. Um, and we also have, um, as I've mentioned before, and we'll kind of talk about uh, a little more in detail through this presentation, um, have an active hand in the core team um, for the FinOS Open Source Foundation. Uh, and specifically for this talk, we'll be looking at the AI readiness group and some of the work we're doing there in AI security. Um, additionally, some work to kind of look forward to. Um, we have been working on um, an AI security reference architecture um, in tandem and kind collaboration with Helix, TestifySec, and Flux. Um, additionally, we are a proud member of Open UK, um, which is an open source uh, organization for the United Kingdom. Um, so, a little on the agenda. Um, so first, we're going to talk about what's the problem, problem space, right? So what are we really trying to solve? Um, what is the driving motivation for some of the work FinOS has done? Um, and how have we been involved in that? Uh, so mainly, that's looking at responsible and secure AI adoption um, in regulated industry, in this case, financial services. Um, and that goes into what we are trying to achieve. Um, so we are looking at developing a simple governance framework um, with the collaboration with FinOS and the, uh, the different organization members that are a part of it. Um, and a part of that is what I mentioned on the threat model um, and some of the threat enumeration uh, in the governance framework. Um, so what are we threat modeling? Um, so we are looking at an intentionally reductionist um, architecture um, of a LLM-based application that uses RAG um, and uh, also includes an external SaaS inference uh, provider as well. Uh, but we'll get a little more into that in, in this presentation. Um, so then we'll, we'll talk about uh, kind of what we found out. Um, so some different uh, focus areas for security um, in respect to AI, as well as in the lens of financial services and uh, or financial services and organizational adoption. Um, and kind of some last touching points, um, I'm going to go a little bit into what already exists. Um, so what are the different communities? Uh, what are the different resources that are out there that you can already join, that you can already look at, that will help kickstart your knowledge base on AI security, specifically in the open source lens? Um, and of course, there's always more work to be done um, in, in this space. And I'll kind of get into a little bit on how you guys contribute and, and also maybe even join FinOS as well. 
Um, so what is the problem space? Uh, with the rapid rise of AI and machine learning, everyone is excited and abuzz um, with uh, thoughts and ideas of the different benefits that it could bring them. Um, and it is sort of a double-edged sword, especially when you look at something like a chatbot leveraging AI and the permissions and responsibility given with it. Um, and even considering that it is now giving personal recommendations to something like a customer and user. There's a lot of area for risk and concern there. Um, this dramatically uh, has increased in the accuracy of certain pattern recognition anom in anomaly detection systems. Um, so there's kind of been like a cat and mouse game going on um, as AI can draw conclusions from a huge volume of data that previously was not able to do so, at least without extremely high costs um, as well as uh, hardware to do so. Um, and added on to this is the promise of predictive capabilities um, to predict the future of financial outcomes, to predict the future of organizational outcomes, of end user satisfaction. Um, so there's always two sides to this coin, right? Um, and especially with an organization adopting AI, um, it's uh, good to uh, look broadly uh, to start as kind of a jumping platform for AI security uh, at frameworks, at guidelines, um, to then be able to expand your knowledge base of AI security so that you can adopt it safely and securely. Um, so, there's a lot going on here. And uh, this uh, reference architecture is something actually developed um, by one of my colleagues, Francesco uh, Beltramini at a control plane, um, where he uh, worked on um, a threat model of MLSEC or MLSEC ops in this case uh, for an aerospace organization. Uh, so even from what you can see here without really doing a deep dive into this architecture, um, there is a, a wide problem space and attack surface. Uh, so from the data preparation, the training and tuning, um, the deploying and monitoring phase, as well as also from the different actors at play here, right? So the data scientists from collecting, cleaning, and pre-processing data, um, exploring and analyzing the data to gain insights off of it, um, as well as machine learning engineer itself. So who is actually developing um, and maintaining the machine learning infrastructure and pipeline, converting data science models into production-ready software. Um, and also the data engineer, uh, so managing the data pipelines, the data storage, um, and ensuring the data is collected, stored, and retrieved efficiently. Um, there is a lot to break down here just from an architectural standpoint um, and even from the threat model scope of, of what they were looking at, um, there, there's a lot to, to kind of break down. Um, and if you're interested, uh, please feel free to check out uh, the, the talk given by Francesco on Kubernetes MLSEC. Um, so some of the threats and at a very high level, um, you can already see that there is a lot of, of branching attack trees that could span down from this. Uh, so from model tampering and backdooring, um, from model poisoning, prompt injection, which a lot of you have, I'm sure have heard of, uh, from more generic adversarial attacks, um, training data extraction, extrapolation, as well as DOS uh, and, and do wallet as well. So kind of looking more at um, a, a monetary compromise, whether that's kind of overutilization of services, um, <clears throat> there is there's a lot of space, not only as well in security, but in bias and in, uh, in ethics, uh, as well as in, in safe and secure responses, for example, to users that need to be considered. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on here. Um, and to kind of further elucidate that, um, some of you may have seen uh, the OWASP top 10 for large learning models, uh, but this is a great jumping platform and resource to kind of get started to understand the different issues, um, the different adversarial attacks that they are seeing both in the wild as well as that they are expecting in the future. Um, so a few different issues that are kind of broken down from this. Uh, the control and data planes are inseparable for LMs. Um, they're non-deterministic by design. Um, and semantic search typically prioritizes terms. And there is a great deal for hallucinations, especially in respect to data gaps, based on what you're processing, uh, whether you're fine tuning your own model using an internal or external model. Um, so there's gonna be trade-offs between restrictions and utility. Um, this is going to lead to an increased tax surface. Um, and we are seeing familiar risks and familiar controls that are being suggested around uh, you know, terms like SBOM or supply chain, in this case your AI supply chain and your data processing, um, as well as data loss prevention and access control are still relevant in AI security. 
Um, <clears throat> and on top of this, we're seeing uh, different adversary uses, right, that are not only seeking to compromise AI, but using AI to compromise your systems and, and even other AI systems. Um, so enhanced malware creation and generative malware creation, um, or more sophisticated phishing schemes, which we have seen as this continual cat and mouse game that continues to go on, deep fakes, and, and continuing on with that, that uh, process of innovative hacking. Um, so there's a lot to look out for, um, and to be able to understand this better, um, and to be able to, uh, from, you know, for example, a security engineering uh, respect, you need to threat model. Um, you need to have a baseline to understand what threats could impact your system, um, and how you can mitigate them, how you could break those kill chains. Um, so I've kind of put together a, a very high level understanding of um, some of the different focus areas, for example, for enterprise adoption of AI. Um, and you can see even from a high level, there is a lot to already consider. So from a model selection um, phase, looking at data integration, data privacy, um, as well as fine, or fine tuning or any sort of in-context mapping you need to do for your model, um, to enterprise operations when you're running and hopefully going to deploy the model itself. Um, so model monitoring, governance, and security come key into focus in that phase. Um, end user management, uh, so prompt engineering. Again, you guys have probably heard a little bit about this. It's been a, a lot of different blog posts, articles have been pushing around, around prompt engineering, prompt injection. Um, so making sure that input filtering is in place. There is some sort of sanitization, anonymization, um, as well as content and context guardrails. So making sure that whatever is brought back as well as whatever is put in is not harmful to the end user um, and does not cause, for example, some sort of hallucination with the output. Um, and finally, some, some more um, kind of SRE standpoint for model and compute optimization. Um, so model event caching, model compression, uh, prompt routing flows, so making sure that uh, you're able to optimize the routing flow from an end user to your system or even from, for example, like an, uh, a reinforcement learning human feedback perspective. Um, how do you give that back to your, your model in a way that doesn't incur millions of dollars? Um, and of course, runtime and GPU opti optimization are still concerns about this. And all a part of it is in scope uh, for the responsible and secure AI adoption in an organization. Um, so to try to break this down in a little bit of a simpler way, uh, and something that uh, kind of clicked more to me when I was researching into this, um, some of you may have uh, heard about some of the guidelines that have been published uh, jointly by the UK's NC, uh, I might be butchering this, NCSC uh, and CISA, um, specifically around the guidelines for secure AI development. Um, so this kind of breaks down from a, a process standpoint um, the different areas of security consideration that you need for developing uh, and deploying an AI. Uh, <clears throat> so the first is secure design. Um, so your system and model trade-offs, um, understanding the risks, and then of course threat modeling in the secure by design approach before that is ever rolled out or, or you begin that development and deployment uh, life cycle. Um, so then that moves into the secure development. Um, so supply chain security, um, at, or asset and technical debt management, as well as your internal documentation around the processes um, and even the development of your AI itself. Um, and into the deployment, so you secure your infrastructure, uh, your models themselves, so if you're using some, an open source model, you're fine tuning itself, securing that uh, from compromise, um, developing an incident management, so any sort of playbooks that you need in case um, of an incident, for example, a prompt injection, uh, what do you do to remediate that, how do you, uh, or input, or how do you uh, increase your input filtering um, that so make sure that does not happen again, or in the least, that it does not return anything harmful to the end user. Um, and then, of course, introducing a responsible release process is key to your deployment. Um, and the final phase here, uh, which I say final, which is uh, not totally true because this is more of a cycle of continuance, right? Um, so from design to secure operation and maintenance, this should be continuing throughout your AI lifecycle. Um, so post-deployment resiliency, ensuring that your solution is resilient, um, <clears throat> and then logging and monitoring of that system itself, so making sure it is operating up to performance metrics, um, and update management and information sharing around the system itself. Um, and these guidelines are becoming increasingly important, right? Um, because the, the CISA um, 
and as well as NCSC, has been pushing these um, to then develop regulations based on AI. Um, so uh, if you're interested, they have a roadmap as well of 2023 and 2024. So you can kind of see how they are developing these guidelines and frameworks and how they expect these to be in the future um, enforced um, as a regulatory oversight, which looking from the perspective of FinOS and financial services is now critically important to get ahead of the game um, as adoption is, is in, or continuing to increase. Um, so what are we trying to achieve here? Um, there is a mountain of excellent resources out there. Um, there are wealth of, of blog posts, of guidelines and frameworks, but a lot of them are at a fairly generic level. Um, they give guidance, um, whether that's kind of general or governance-wise, um, and they, they could maybe give a threat or a control library um, that's not really attached to any sort of reference architecture or a threat model itself. Um, but for a security engineer, more of a kind of an, uh, a security standpoint, the baseline and kind of the jumping point needs to start with a threat model, right? Um, so that is a part of what we are trying to achieve with this uh, governance framework. Um, so before I kind of dive into that, a little bit about the AI Readiness Group and FinOS itself. Um, so FinOS is a part of the Linux Foundation, so it is an open source community. Um, and their kind of mission statement, I've, I've added on here, I won't read it out word for word, um, but they are looking at bringing financial services to the table in open source contribu or contribution and development. So they are no longer just consumers, but they are also at the table um, and helping to develop um, what they also consume as far as open source software, and in this case, in, uh, in AI. Um, so whatever sort of open source model um, or, or processes that go along with that, they are now helping in that process. And FinOS, FinOS is kind of helping bridge that, that gap between the open source community and financial services that ultimately consume the software that they are developing. Um, and its, it's focus on the AI readiness group uh, is on the impact of AI um, as well as kind of on the future adoption uh, in, in the secure adoption at that in enterprise organizations. Um, there's a lot of challenges that are already being faced that they're hoping to address. So looking at hallucinations, prompt injections, um, you know, tech debt and evolution, um, as well as some unique industry challenges. Um, and there has been a strong industry response to adopt AI, but existing um, bank and you know, financial services processes are not exactly well suited to adopt AI. And it doesn't just stop at financial services, it's across the board in industry. Um, so they have a necessity for adoption, but not necessarily the capacity to do so, and not entirely the applicable resources to secure that, to threat model it, and ensure a responsible adoption. Um, so if you're interested in checking out uh, FinOS or even to joining it, I have the, the GitHub link there. Um, and uh, membership, it, it is an open source group, uh, so anyone is more than welcome uh, to join, to try to contribute. Um, and uh, I have the pleasure of working with some of the core team members, uh, Vicente, as well as Andrew Martin, um, our CEO, our core team members of the AI Readiness Group uh, to push this initiative. So, uh, oh, looks like my clicker went out. Um, a little bit about the scope and the assumptions here for uh, the framework. Um, so it is a high-level threat enumeration for LLM-based applications and financial service organizations. Um, and specifically in this kind of early enumeration phase, we are looking at a, an intentionally reductionist architecture um, that includes a large language model um, implementing RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation, um, and an external SAS for inference. And most of these technologies are purposely being kept abstracted um, to promote the applicability um, of the results themselves um, so that future financial organizations can use this um, not as a, an, an end-all, catch-all, but as a jumping platform for further security assessment and development of secure AI architecture in the future. Um, um, so quality assurance, so deterministic or range-based testing of model application uh, responses is out of scope um, at this time. Um, and uh, I do want to make a mention of fairness, bias, and ethical concerns. So that is a focus of FinOS, and it continues to be a focus of FinOS. Um, in the respect to where we're at with the project, um, we have not yet begun uh, fully implementing it into the framework, but it is being investigated, and it will be considered in the framework. Um, but in the current state of things, um, it, it is not uh, in the current phase of the project. Um, so some assumptions as well that we are working off of. 
Um, <clears throat> the existing operational controls in the organization, in this case, can be relied upon, um, and the infrastructure, supply chain, and application code adheres to financial services, best practices, um, and industry standards. Um, and then additionally, there have been mitigating steps implemented um, to address ethical concerns with metadata, metrics, and logs to audit the accuracy as well as the bias of LLM-based application. Um, and equally, we assume that carbon outputs and system costs um, are intertwined and thus the responsibility of application and system developers. Um, and finally, we assume that there is a system monitor that exists and has the power to make legal implicating decisions. Um, so, um, go. All right. So, what are we threat modeling? What is our reference architecture? And kind of how are we, we trying to understand this? Um, so, this is a kind of a high level data flow diagram of what we're looking at. Um, so, we have generally a chat application that is internal to the organization you're working in, um, that the main uh, data source is from internal data and documentation, in this case, uh, presumably from Confluence or some sort of documentation site. Uh, we have a vector store, um, as well as in, uh, on, on the kind of the left-hand side here, you can see that we have an external um, SAS inference, um, <clears throat> and this is, it's kind of like a black box, right? So here we're only kind of elucidating the model itself and embeddings, but there will be multiple different controllers. And from a flow standpoint, this is highly simplified, right? So this could be greatly expanded from the process from uh, internal data, uh, like from the confluence itself, to a, an embedding controller, um, and then into the model into the, the vector store after that, um, so that you have kind of that formatted uh, data as well. And then again, from the user, from the query standpoint, uh, going back to the LLM and then into the vector. So you can kind of see that there is a few different flows between the SAS inference um, and the internal environment that could be greatly expanded upon, and this could be a much larger architecture diagram. Uh, but for our purposes, kind of like what I mentioned, it, it is intentionally reductionist uh, to promote um, the kind of realization of this, of this framework, as well as the applicability of the findings. Um, so a little kind of more details of what's going on here. So the user query sent into the chat application itself, um, <clears throat> and then semantic search and data processing happening between the internal um, data repository, in this case um, Confluence, and the vector store um, behind the chat application, um, and then from the LLM API connection to the external SAS inference, um, that, that is where the model is held, uh, essentially. So that, that would be an external inference of, of the model. Um, so. This is kind of our reference architecture that we started with, and again, we are, we are in the early phases of this project, um, so there will be more updates to this architecture, um, as well as kind of how we understand the threat mapping and, and modeling to here. Um, so <clears throat> what did we find out? So what are the threats? Um, what kind of controls are we looking at, and, and what's the applicability of, of the findings that we're looking into? Um, so again, showing the, the DFD that I kind of just showed, um, I've marked and kind of notated uh, a few areas of threats that we have enumerated at kind of a high level. Um, so I'll go over the threat mapping. Um, we have a lot more that we have been documenting, uh, but for the interest of time in this presentation, I'd like to kind of focus on the first five um, and then kind of go into the controls based off of those. Um, <clears throat> so the first um, is, uh, rather high level, so proprietary information leaked to, uh, in this case, the external SAS inference. Um, so sensitive information could be exposed to unauthorized parties that maybe are internal um, to the SAS inference uh, or, or to your organization itself, um, which could lead to loss of competitive advantage, um, legal repercussions, as well as breach of client trust. Um, which is critically important, especially in financial services when you're trusting them with your well-being and your wealth as well. Um, so, uh, the second here is the access control to your vector store itself is compromised. Um, so this could lead to unauthorized internal access to data, as well as data extrapolation um, and leakage and tampering. Uh, so this could lead to misinformation, as well as potential financial and branding loss for the company. Um, <clears throat> On the third here, so access control to chat application itself is compromised. Um, this could be due to an inadequate, or sorry, inadequate access restrictions um, to the application or to the API interface that is used to interface with it. Um, and this could lead to unauthorized access as well as misuse of sensitive information and data that the application has access to based on the, the data processing and the model that it's, uh, it's connecting with. 
Um, and, and four is something that has, has been talked a lot about uh, with AI and specifically Gen AI and LLMs um, is the risk for hallucinations. Um, so this could be something like AI generated false information, maybe that misconstrues something or just is completely factually incorrect. Um, and this, the kind of damage here is the overconfidence in inaccurate responses, right? Um, so leading to poor decision making um, <clears throat> and as well to client dissatisfaction um, or, or even to harmful responses to clients that will definitely cause uh, some sort of brand or reputational damage. Uh, not just in your application of AI, but also across in the industry if that is something, for example, that is forward facing um, to your end user, which in this case this is more of an internal application uh, for documentation and reference purposes. Purposes, um, but it could be something more external to an end user, like uh, some sort of chat services on, on your website. Um, and the fifth one that I will cover, kind of before we get into the controls itself, um, is non-deterministic risk uh, with the chat application and the external SaaS inference itself. Um, so this could lead to unpredictable outputs, which is um, in many cases uh, an accepted risk in LLMs and J or Gen AI um, in the fact that they are non-deterministic by nature. Um, so this could lead to inconsistent responses, as well as eroding the trust and reliability both with your internal users and with the clients themselves, um, if they cannot trust the solution that is then supposed to, in this case, give them information about your internal documentation, your internal processes, and how that works. Um, so there is a, a few others here that I've elucidated, but I will kind of stay on the first five, but some others are non-terministic risk with the LLM, uh, denial of service, or denial of wallet, uh, so looking more at the uh, kind of the financial aspects of that. Um, Compromise integrity of the SaaS uh, infrastructure itself, either the open source software it uses, the dependencies, and as some sort of supply chain attack, um, or the model itself. Um, Compromise integrity of the source data or vector store on your internal environment, um, as well as prompt injection and malicious input, which continues to remain as one of the, the greatest um, adversarial attacks against Gen AI um, and just artificial intelligence in general. Um, <clears throat> and uh, kind of like I mentioned before, there is more to come, and we have a lot that we're working on in this framework. This is kind of the, some of the high-level enumeration that we've worked with, and then we've started to map these to controls to kind of give a showcase of what we're working on, uh, as well as some of the applicability to uh, the organizations we're working with. Um, so let's get into the controls. All right. So the first one here, um, for proprietary information leaked to, in this case, the external SaaS inference, um, there are a few different controls um, that you could consider here, uh, primarily in respect to embedding unique identifiers and data to, tre to trace the leaks themselves, or the leaks, sorry, <laughs> I cannot English today. Um, and the mitigation here, uh, first, is having some sort of the anomaly detection, right? So if seeing internal data is leaked to unauthorized sources um, or being extrafolated somewhere where it should not be. Um, canaries and fingerprints to help identify the source of the leak itself, allowing for prompt action to prevent further breaches. Um, as well as a plugin architecture for the SAS inference can extend this capability, ensuring tighter control and monitoring, as well as uh, a greater understanding of, of the different dependencies. Um, so on the, the second threat, uh, access control to the vector store is compromised. Um, so this is kind of looking at filtering data before uh, it had reached the model. Um, so anonymizing sensitive information, so looking at input, san or input sanitization and anonymization, preventing uh, unnecessary exposure, um, and ensuring that only relevant uh, and non-sensitive data is leaked, or, or is used, I should say, um, and reducing the risk of any sort of PII or IP leakage um, because of that. Uh, so that kind of prevents unauthorized or sensitive data from being uh, not only uh, leaked uh, in the eventual case uh, of a breach, but also from even being processed by the model, so reducing that attack surface. Um, and then on the third threat, so access control to the chat application is compromised. Um, so for this, uh, there's a few traditional and kind of non-traditional controls that come out of this. Uh, so user, um, app, and model firewall and filtering, so kind of a multi-layer firewall and filtering approach um, could be used to mitigate this. Um, so uh, one thing that we've kind of seen in the respect to LLM is something called LLM as a judge uh, to evaluate prompt integrity. So that kind of allows it to uh, use a, a customizable LLM to detect suspicious prompts, um, as well as prevent injection attacks as they are occurring or happening from an end user input. 
Um, from an API observability standpoint, uh, monitoring interactions between the chat application, the model itself, the vector store, as well as your data for any sort of anomalies, um, and ensuring comprehensive visibility and control on your internal, um, or your internal environment. And then toxicity and PII filtering kind of goes into that, so filtering out known um, wrong information or harmful answers to protect users from um, harmful inputs or bias. Um, and also TLS termination uh, is, is something that's a more standard control to ensure uh, data privacy and security. Uh, so four, uh, in a kind of here on the hallucination risk, um, you start to prioritize observability, right? So monitoring, recording, and correlating system interactions is crucial. Um, so looking at anomaly detection, uh, identifying unusual patterns to help prevent uh, vulnerabilities um, and potential breaches, um, perhaps before they happen, if you can detect the behavior. Maybe if someone is, is stringing together a prompt injection, but it is getting rejected, but they are, they are trying to brute force their way into the system. Um, and as well, audit and compliance is crucially important, especially in financial services, um, and drift detection. So monitoring changes in the underlying data or the model versions themselves, which uh, we have seen increasingly has, has become a problem with observability into open source models. Um, and uh, the output and user prompt stability. Um, so consistent and reliable system performance based on what you expect your end user to give uh, and what kind of metrics you have set up to test. Um, and then the, uh, the final um, one that we're looking at here is the non-deterministic risk. Um, so <clears throat> application level accept or acceptance testing is important. Um, so ensuring the application meets the functional and non-functional requirements set up by organization uh, around deployment and development. Um, and as, as well, kind of infrastructure monitoring and testing by assumed controls. Um, I'm running out of time a little bit here, so I will, uh, I will pop over to the, the next uh, area of OSINT, just so you guys can understand some of the different uh, open source communities that are out there. Um, so apart from FinOS, there's, there's a lot already that are out there. So some resources is OWASP is a great one, uh, Mitra Atlas, um, the Guidelines for Secure AI System Development by NCSS, or NCSC and CISA, um, as well as the Google SIF, or Secure AI Framework, and Databricks also came out with a, a great read on the, the Security AI Framework. Um, as far as communities are concerned, uh, OWASP is a huge one that has had a lot of uh, steam and traction picked up around AI. Uh, the Google AI Red Team, OpenAI Red Team, I think NVIDIA AI Red Team also has started to crop up as well. Um, and then Cloud Security Alliance, or CSA, has an AI safety initiative working group. Uh, and then, of course, the FinOS um, AI readiness working group, um, which I wholeheartedly uh, encourage you guys to check out and hopefully to contribute and participate. Um, so what's next? Um, we are working on an AI security reference architecture, kind of like I mentioned. I won't go into super high depth and detail about this, um, but we are working with Helix and TestifySec um, to help not only build this uh, infrastructure, uh, but we are spinning it up, we are creating it, uh, so we can deploy and test this and validate our findings um, in, in a real and in, in, uh, a manageable sense. Uh, so it's not just a proof of concept that we're working on, we are working on the actual tangible realization of this architecture as well. Um, and. A few takeaways, so there's a lot to consider, the threat model everything. Um, and incorporating red teaming, especially um, reinforcement learning from human feedback is crucially important to AI security um, and to promote um, the, both the helpfulness of your model as well as reduce the chance of harmfulness of bias of, of your responses. Um, and please support FinOS, support the AI Readiness Working Group. We would love to have you, love to see you on the, the meetings. Um, and uh, later today, we will have a talk by none other than Vicente Herrera, one of the core team members of FinOS, who will be talking about uh, future open source LLM ch uh, kill chains, so looking at different open source um, attack trees uh, and, and adversarial attacks and kind of how you break those um, as well. Um, and uh, tomorrow in London, um, Rowan Baker, our head of security, will be uh, speaking about securing Genai and finance, uh, so looking at some practical uh, governance and more kind of on the, the security and, and prevention aspect of that. Uh, so please feel free to check out those talks and uh, hopefully attend uh, Vicente's later today. Um, thank you guys all for, uh, for listening in and uh, <clears throat> I appreciate you guys joining.